because my parents tried to like have me learn my heritage and at the time I didn't really want to. <laughs> oh really? Do we have dual citizenship? We're rolling. All right, here we go. Let me do an uh, Instagram story behind the scenes. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I have such a special guest with me because this is Linny D. Hi. She was adopted with me. We were in the orphanage together. And if you haven't seen one of my other videos with one of my other shaman sisters, Emily, I will link it down below. Also, Linny D has a YouTube channel, so I'll link her channel down below as well. I'd love it if you would go check it out. She talks about different topics and hopefully in the near future, she will talk about going to boarding school. That is coming soon. So go over to her channel and like, like spam her comments saying that you want that video because I want that video. Do you want to say anything? <laughs> Uh, I mean, basically, I think you just covered that intro, so... Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and also give this a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you are adopted or know anyone who's adopted because I would love to know. Today's video, we are answering some questions from you guys about being adopted. If you guys are not following me on Instagram, make sure to do so and you can participate in any of my other Q&A type videos. We're gonna start off with Twitter. Okay, so Laura says, would you like to learn the native language that your biological parents know? So, fun fact, I actually did learn it, but very badly. <laughs> um, I mentioned that in my other video. Basically, I took Chinese, I think, for about 10 years before I quit taking it, and I learned how to speak it so I can, like, conversationally speak to someone in Chinese. Uh, Mandarin only, not Cantonese. But I can't read anything. <laughs> um, for me, no, I don't really care. I know that sounds so bad, but number one, Chinese or Cantonese or whatever you just said. Uh, I speak Mandarin specifically because that's what they speak like on the mainland primarily. Got it. And yeah. But I've just heard that it's so hard to learn and I could barely understand Spanish. And around here, there's a lot of people that speak Spanish. So you would think that I would know like more. I know some words or whatever because I had to take that in school. But like that was my hardest class. I found like it was harder than any other class I've ever taken and I've taken some pretty challenging classes So no, just because I don't think it would come natural at this point Also, I'm just kind of done taking it because it's like I could probably go back and learn more But at this point in my life, I'm just not particularly interested I took five years of Spanish actually so I speak that much better and I just find there's more places I can use it The next question is actually a really good question. Mm -hmm. So thanks Courtney. Courtney has a channel Thanks girl for supporting me, even though I called you out about not asking a question. Do you have dual citizenship? As far as I know, we don't. I don't know, I don't think so, but I'm gonna call my mom and ask because hopefully she'll answer. Hey baby. Hey, um, do, we're filming a video. Do we have dual citizenship or no? Do you have dual citizenship? Um, I don't believe so, no. Okay, then we don't. Yeah. Yeah, because Shaylin's right Yeah, but when I gathered, it's like it kind of transferred over when we came over here. Yeah. Yeah, we do, we do not believe so. We never believed you did. All right, thanks, Sherry. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. What are you guys doing today? Filming. Hanging out. Filming. And hanging out. Filming? Oh, that sounds fun. Okay. All right, bye, Sherry. <laughs> Bye, bye. <laughs> so no, we don't have dual citizenship. Nope, it all just transferred over when we came over here. Like I have the old passports that we used to have. Yeah, we do have an old passport. So speaking about the passport, I have mine. And this is what it looks like. Here is my Chinese passport. Obviously I wanna show you guys a picture of me as a baby before I was like adopted and stuff. There it is. <laughs> There's me as a baby. And my name in the orphanage was Zhou Manjin. Zhou Majin. Yep. What was yours? Uh, Song Zihong. Sherry says that you have the prettiest Chinese name. Yeah, it's really funny because people always say how pretty it is when I have to talk to Chinese people and they're mm -hmm. like, oh, what's your Chinese name? And I tell them. Because <laughs> like in English, it just sounds kind of ridiculous. It's thinking Song rainbow. Song Zihong. No, in English, if you translate it, it means thinking rainbow. Well, then what does mine mean? I don't know. That's the problem with not being able to read <laughs> in Chinese. <laughs> okay, well anyway, that's my passport. We had the passports, which is like what they issued us when we had to, you know, cross the sea to come back over here. And then um, I think from that point, like it was just done because then we were officially like American citizens. And um, she's from Washington state. Mm -hmm. So if you guys didn't know, all of us live in kind of different states. I think you guys already knew that though. All right, Possibly. so let's move on to Instagram. Instagram. Someone says, have a good day. <laughs> Thank you. Kay Saw asks, in what ways have you felt connected to your heritage? Oh, I gotta think about this one. <laughs> one eternity later. Both of us were completely from like white families. So <laughs> it's a very different, a 
attempt to connect to it, I guess you could say, than, um, you know, like Alyssa, who was raised by Chinese parents. So there's like a difference with just that to begin with. Uh, I mean, for me, I didn't really connect to it for a really long time. Um, if you look at my channel, I've got these like videos that are like these Asian studies projects from college. And that's kind of when I started to do like actual connecting to my heritage. Cause before that, my town is like very small and very like non-diverse. So I didn't really have any way to connect to my heritage. I just kind of would try to like ignore it because more often than not, it'd be something that would make me other than like a part of something. I only got to really enjoy that kind of part of being like Chinese uh, when I went to high school and hung out with Chinese Americans. Boarding school, not my public school. And then um, when I was doing my study stuff to kind of like get in depth and just kind of think about it. Um, for me, I haven't really, and I know that sounds so bad, but because like she said, we come from white families and a lot of people around here are not, at least Chinese. I was friends with a lot of Asian people like during my childhood and growing up. So that is kind of where I got my Asian pride, but they weren't Chinese necessarily. For strictly the heritage part, I haven't really connected at all. I mean, the Europeans are trying to like I wouldn't use like this like with quotation marks, like make you though, like no. learn your heritage. Cause my parents like tried to like have me learn my heritage. And at the time I didn't really want to. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. You know, with like, I'm taking Chinese and then I oh. took like some Kung Fu and I quit immediately cause I really hated it. They put you in Kung Fu? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wanted to learn a martial art cause like everyone was taking karate. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> It's oh my thing. gosh. You know those things how like every like kid, like there's always kids that are taking like martial arts and whatnot. Yeah, but no, it's just funny because that's kind of like you're Chinese, like not saying that's racist, but like that's very stereotypical. No, it is. It really is. Cause here's the thing. So everyone's taking like martial arts at the time. So I was like, yeah, everyone's taking karate. Let's do that. And instead they put me in Kung Fu. The martial art itself is fine, but the way that it was taught at that particular place, I did not like. It was very, let's say intense. It was very intense. I also wanted to say she is right. My parents parents never really forced upon me to learn or connect with the heritage. And I'm kind of happy about that because that's not who I am as a person. That's not how I was raised. That's not where I grew up or anything. So I kind of am appreciative of that because I wouldn't want to feel something pushed on me because I think I would have your reaction of like, not nope, really want wanting it. to do that. And I personally don't. If I wanted to do that, I would want to have it within me to want it. It's like when you choose, you want it. When yeah. it's like time to come back to it or whatever. Yeah. Which I did do that a little with learning Chinese. When mm -hmm. I was taking community college, I thought I was, I was trying to go to a school that had a language um, credit requirement. So I actually took some, a bit of Chinese at the community college. Cause I was literally like, I've done five years of Spanish. I don't need more of this. Let's see if I can learn how to read. All right, next question. Have you thought about meeting your birth parents? Not specifically. When I was younger, I might've dwelled on it a certain amount just because of like, again, being one of like the only Asians and the only Chinese people in the area. So sometimes, you know, people would ask that a lot, which got really annoying as a kid, but I would sometimes wonder about that just because of the fact that like, oh, would I belong there better than like here and that kind of thing. Keep in mind too, she lives in a very it's white- It's a very small town. It's very white. Very white, very small town. I grew up in a, obviously a larger city, a lot more diversity. So yeah. we have a different experience. Yeah, it was extremely different. I was, it was like, I'm from like really rural parts of Washington. Like when you think Washington, you think like the rain in like Seattle, but our side is like a desert climate. So you get like all of the seasons and also it's extremely rural. So sometimes I would just sort of think like, would I fit in better there and those kind of things, but it's not necessarily about finding like my family and who I am. It's more about like just, when I was a kid, it was more like, would I fit in better? And then I kind of, you know, let that go as I got older. Have I thought yes, and I still kind of do, but not necessarily to connect with them on like any emotional level. I would just want to see what they look like. Who yeah, do I look like more? Do I look like the birth mother or birth father? And to just put this out there, they are birth parents. They're not my parents, not the people that raised me. Please don't use the word real parents because people use that all the time in real life. <laughs> it's at least to me, very annoying. It's just annoying. They don't understand though. Yeah, so, that's what I'm saying like as an informational way, like I'm not like trying yeah. to like attack people who are doing that. I'm saying like for future reference, you know, yeah. like 
personally for me and I think for you as well, like using real parents is just kind of annoying. Yeah, yeah. But then I correct them. So I'm like, oh, my birth parents. Yeah, that's what I do too. Yeah. Just to like make sure that they understand. So I feel like, I mean, I'm guessing about this, but I feel like I have the birth father's body. I don't know, but I have an hourglass figure. So maybe I have the birth mom. You know, I feel like I have like male shoulders though. Cause they're just so broad and it's annoying. You never know. Maybe you got your grandma's shoulders or something though. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, that is something I am curious about sometimes. So the next question is kind of towards me, but Baraboo 101 asks, did you have any struggles growing up being adopted by two women? No, not really. I had a couple people that thought it was weird, but that was when we were in middle school. Other than that, not really. I was always, and I'm still nervous about telling people because like, I don't know what reaction I'm gonna get, but we are in 2020 now and you know, times have changed. So I get less nervous saying like, hey, I have two moms, they're gay, but I'm not. That sort of thing, I'm a, I was adopted when I was one. That's like my spiel when I meet anyone just because if you're not gonna like me and my family, then you can kiss my booty because I don't want anything really to do with you because I don't want that negativity in my life. But I've never really had anyone hate on me or anything. I mean, it's a good thing you probably lived in the places you have because of the fact that like, if you were where I was, that'd be a massive thing. Yeah, exactly. Baraboo also asks another question. Do you ever want to try and find your birth parents? This kind of segues into something I'm working on because I took a 23andMe uh, DNA test and I wasn't like specifically looking to find my parents or family when I took it. It's actually funny. People like when I'm in public will like walk up to me and like Korean people and they'll be like, are you Korean? You look just like my sister. And so I was- People say I look Korean too. Really? I think it's because of our eyes. Yeah, it might be the eyes and I have really high cheekbones and stuff. Well, me too. Yeah. I mean, mine are high. We come yeah, closer. We've got, those, like, we've got those like high cheekbones, which are in certain areas. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so people will ask me that. And so after a while I was like, Let's put this to bed. I'm curious now. Like, is there any Korean in there? Like, is there anything else non-Chinese in there? So I th figured, um, let's take the test for that reason. But then, like, I also, like, clicked off the, uh, on the, like, find my relatives thing because I thought, oh, this could be really interesting. What if I find, like, a random adopted sister or something, you know? This That's could be weird. really interesting. Yeah, I know. So I figure, like, I don't know if I'll, I don't know if I find anyone if I'm going to approach them or not, but I just <laughs> thought it'd be interesting to, like, specifically see those results and then if anything shows up that could be interesting as well um for me i would want to try and find them only because i want to see what they look like and because i think it would make a great video it would be like titled finding my birth parents or something but i need a lot of money for that which i don't have so i don't know if my youtube channel like skyrockets or something then yeah, video coming soon, but obviously I don't have the money to find China and especially with the coronavirus. The last question is, where are you from? They probably mean like, where are you from in China? Yeah, well, we're called Shaman Sisters. As far as we know, we are from Shaman. <laughs> and Fujian province. Yeah. Okay, so that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to give it a thumbs up. Go over to Lenny D's channel and she will have hopefully a collab with us. That will be up relatively soon, I hopefully. think. Hopefully. <laughs> and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.